Okay. Well, everyone has busy um, schedules. It's the second to last day of the month of June um, and Q2 of 2022. I can't believe we're already at um, halfway through the year, but excited to talk to you all today and excited to have you join us and spend your Wednesday lunch hour with us. Um, my name is Kristen Schantz. I'm the VP of Growth Marketing here at Hierology, um, and I'm happy to um, be hosting um, be with you today for the 2022 Hireology Mid-Year Check-In. Um, our focus today is on recruiting and hiring adjustments you can make now to win in the second half of the year. There's a lot of the great things going on. We're excited to share with it um, all with you today. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Kristen Schantz. I'm the VP of Growth Marketing. I am super excited to have two of my favorite colleagues, actually probably my two favorite colleagues join me today. Anil Harjani, our SUP of Product and Growth, and Terry Adams, our VP of People. Um, each of them have great things to bring with you about how they put some things into practice, what we've got going on in the product world or that you can take advantage of. Um, and so let me talk a little bit about what our agenda will look like um, today. So it's going to be three parts. I'm going to give you a little bit of a breakdown um, as to what we're seeing in the hiring market conditions out there today. I have some great new research um, that we put in market this quarter um, to get some insights from applicants. I'm then going to turn it over to um, my friend and colleague, um, Anil, to talk about the hireology solution, what great things we have in store for you to take advantage of some of this research and really make it work. And then we're really gonna um, learn from practice what we preach and learn from Terry on how we um, kind of take all the things that we see in market and apply it to how we recruit, hire, and build our best team um, at Hireology ourselves. And so with that, um, we'll have some great time together today. We will leave some time for Q&A at the end. So feel free to chatter it in. Um, Michelle and myself will be watching for it. And then we'll also leave for some live questions as well at the end. Um, and then we always get this question for every webinar. So I want to say it up front, we will provide the deck and provide a recording of this information as soon as it's over. Um, so no fret, you will get these slides as well as the study that accompanies it. So um, with that, I'll say thank you again for joining us and I'll kick us off. Um, the best way to kick us off and where we always like to start at Hierology is let's talk about the market conditions you face. You all breathe it and live it day to day. I know Terry does as RVP people. Um, it is different, it has changed. I think we're all sick of hearing the phrase unprecedented times, but let's talk about what we're facing and what we're up against um, as business leaders, as owners, as managers and recruiters and people leaders today. Um, if you look at the recent BLS jobs numbers, you see that many Americans are getting back to work unemployment is down, workforce participation is up. And if you look at the job market as a whole, we are actually seeing some recovery compared to where we were six months ago or even last summer. In May, employers added 390,000 jobs to the economy, while unemployment remains steady at 3.6%, which is still record lows back to where we were in 1950s and pre-pandemic. Um, all in all, with just these numbers, it appears the, the economy is recovering nicely, and on paper it is. However, you're going to say, Kristen, that's great. Have you read a newspaper lately? You are all kind of probably starting to see what we see, which is it's not happening fast enough, and many of us are really um, still deep in the hiring crisis that began in 2021. Businesses are looking at a higher, uh, to hire at a rate that is much, much higher than the available demand for talent. In fact, we're currently facing a situation where there's nearly two, that's right, two open jobs for every job seeker. Employers in industries like hospitality, retail, home care, home health care, facility-based care, retail automotive, um, many like you are all feeling this right now. And any industry that has to work in person or any of that kind of direct to, to consumer service um, requires highly skilled labor are really struggling with a shortage right now. Two to one is a ratio that just feels impossible to win against and impossible to compete and win. But we're gonna talk a little bit a bit more about what factors lead to that and where you guys can take advantage of what um, Hierology is seeing. Now, on top of that, and um, it's, not, it's hard to even go a few minutes these days without hearing talks of potential recession. Um, if you, you're like me, you've been glued to the news um, the last couple of days um, and just paying attention to this. Predictions vary on how bad this might be, but either way, experts do predict some sort of downturn later this year or early next. Um, some of you may even be feeling it in certain kinds of industries or markets. It's worth noting that there are many industries that might feel this quite, quite hard. Um, 
think home care automotive, people still need care in a recession. They still need automobiles. There's been a shortage of inventory for so long. They still need to service those vehicles. Many of your businesses are still going to need to hire even as we move forward into potential rocky times. Let's think back to even as a recession approaches us, we're still in a ratio of two to one. And a lot of that is really compounded and that much harder in the skilled labor workforce. So we're navigating this hiring crisis. We're looking at a potential recession. Um, needless to say, things are tough right now, um, and they feel tougher in a different way than they probably did two years ago at the onset of the pandemic. Um, and, hi and Hireology, though, we're in the business to give you the tools and support you need to navigate the situations like this today. And this is the kind of thing that wakes me up at night, gets me excited. Um, so I'm really, really happy that we have this re research to share um, today. Earlier this year, we actually put this survey in market knowing that this was coming. Um, and basically we had 6,000 job applicants, 6,000 um, respond to us and kind of give us their take on what they're looking at in the job market. We asked questions around their expectations in the job search, um, how they navigate applying to the different jobs in the job market. And today I'm gonna run you through some of those big takeaways um, and add some color and some applicant perspective to really help you um, understand what we're seeing. So first, let's our biggest takeaway. Pay is no longer job seekers' primary deciding factor. And if any of you have been in a recruiting or negotiating call in the last couple of days, you're gonna say, Kristen, come on, that can't be true. So let's talk a little bit about um, what that data is. When we ask applicants to rank everything they consider when searching for a new job, pay of course ranks highest. People want money. And this makes sense since you aren't going to apply the job that widely out of the range that you need to live and support your family or one that's drastically inconsistent with your skill set and expectations. So it's going to top the list. But when asked what would prevent them from taking a higher paying offer over a lower paying one, only 16% said nothing. So only 16% of those applicants that you're talking to are going to choose a higher paying job offer versus a lower paying one, no matter what. So what would make them choose the lower paying offer? 44% said flexibility. 39% said career growth, and 32% said fulfilling work. So in other words, if you're competing with companies that can offer higher pay, you can absolutely win um, over many of those candidates if you can offer some of these other benefits they're looking for. Now, quite often we talk to a lot of our customers and they say, hey, I can't offer flexibility. And I wanna challenge you all a little bit on that and start to rethink that phrasing. Um, and really start to think about, hey, if these are the things that I can compete against pay when pay is not something I can do, how can I define it and how can I do it? If we take that 60% and flip it, what this means and to really present this opportunity to you is 84% of candidates will take a lower paying job so long as the pay was in their range and their other needs are met. Remember that the human being um, is, you know, these needs are nuanced. They're not just taking the highest paying offer and not considering anything else. They're looking at jobs holistically. You really, really need to pay. And so pay will always be a matter of fact. You need to provide the value for the job that's being delivered, but there are ways for you to provide a better offer in totality to the consumer or the applicant that you're reaching today. Um, as I mentioned, really rethinking flexibility. Um, it's more than just remote work. I think a lot of us have gotten um, set in our ways as to what we've heard throughout the pandemic, what the media has talked about. Re flexibility is more than just that. I know many of our customers and many of you cannot offer that due to the nature of the industry, and that's okay. People just want to make sure that work works for them. We asked how many people define flexibility, and most people define it more, more so as flexible hours and trust to come and go a bit more rather than working rigid hours under tight supervision. Let me read a couple of these for you because it really um, hits home. A schedule that works with my needs is I'm a single mother with no family. That being said, I need to be able to be available when my kids need me. If the school calls because my child is sick, I'll have to leave work, pick my child up, and stay home with my sick child. Now think about how many of you have run into situations with COVID-19, children being sent home, et cetera, that if the workplace does not allow flexibility for that, that work does not fit with their life. And you need to find a way to make that work and life one and synonymous because that's what it is today. Another way to say this is ability, the ability to design work schedule around other important things like school or parenting. And that's it's in its simplest form. Flexibility is allowing work to work within their life. And that's it. 
And so don't just think about it as remote work. Think about it as, hey, how can I meet the consumer or the job applicant where they are? So that's it on pay is basically you can prioritize other things to compete against pay. The next big takeaway that we saw in our study is the importance of mobile and the job search. And this is really exciting and really tees up some things that Anil is going to talk to you about today. For the first time since we've done this study annually, the majority of job searches are happening on smartphones. 52%, 52%, more than half. And that includes everything from the initial research to the application to even accepting an offer. This number is only going to go up as more digitally native generations enter the workforce. Think about Gen Z being starting to become more and more of the population that's working today. What's more, many job seekers are actually giving up if they can't use their smartphones in the job search with ease. What that means is basically you have people, if you are not mobile optimized, who are basically saying, I'm not even gonna apply for this job. I'm not even gonna look at them because they are not meeting me where my job um, opportunities and my job search is starting. Can you afford as an employer today to cut that population out? And the answer is going to be no. And so this is, these are the things why mobile is not just important, it's table stakes to your ability to be successful. And finally, nearly all of our respondents, 90% said they would be open to texting with a recruiter if it meant moving the hiring process along faster. Um, now's a great time to make a note for yourself. Hey, how many of us are using texting to schedule interviews, have those conversations? Really do some soul searching on that. Um, it means that, you know, if you, what this means for all of you is that you're missing out on a significant opportunity to drive more applicants if you're not making it as easy as possible to apply on a smartphone. It also means that you could be using texting to reach candidates. There's so much that's available to you at your hand in the fingertips of the thing that you're using every day to make your recruiting and your recruiting engine work that much harder for you to help you build your best team. So if you bring these things together, and Anil will talk about some things that we see even in our profit solutions that help with this, um, you're going to be able to drastically increase your applicant pool um, and drastically increase your ability to hire better uh, quality talent. Third takeaway, in addition to, you know, we've talked about pay, we've talked about mobile, is you're losing applicants due to your lengthy applications. Um, it sounds super simple, but it is a big deciding factor for today's um, job seeker. Nearly 60% of respondents have given up on an application because it took too long to complete. Folks today have so many options for work that they don't have to sacrifice hours and hours of their time to find a job. Think back to that, hey, there's two jobs to every one person. Um, what this also means is, hey, they have that many more options to go out there and apply. Why am I going to waste my personal time to apply for a job that they can't even figure out a way to make the application easy for me to fill out? Um, secret shop yourself. Take a look at your job applications. What's going on there? But exactly how long is too long, you're gonna ask me. For about 30% of today's job seekers, anything more than 15 minutes is too long. For 56%, anything more than 30 minutes is too long. If it is taking them um, more than the amount of time I've already talked to you today to fill out an application, you're gonna lose out on that population, one third of your population. So think about that, do some secret shopping, have people apply to your jobs, understand what's going on there. And then how does this app translate to application length? So 15 minutes, 30 minutes completion rate defined as the percentage of people who viewed an application who then went on to complete it drops significantly when you require more than five fields, five fields. Um, and this is based on our own hierology data. So if you, you know, the number of fields in an application that hierology sees up to five, um, the application rate goes up drastically. If you have more than 26%, it's one third of that completion rate. That's a crazy difference and something to be paying attention to and mindful of. And, for, you know, we have some more takeaways here. So we've talked a little bit about pay. We've talked about mobile. We've talked about how to make the application length um, faster. It's all about time. And speaking of time, um, they get hired fast. Speed is critical in today's job market. Job seekers are moving fast onto new opportunities. About a third of our respondents say their most recent job search took them less than two weeks. Less than two weeks from initial application to offer. And this third is likely the best of the best Two, so if you're not able to move fast and get these folks in your pipeline before your competitors, you're missing out on the cream of the crop. Said differently, someone that applied to a job today will have already moved on or accepted a new offer in two weeks from now. Someone that you want to hire will spend the 4th of July holiday next week kind of going through that application process and will be accepting an offer and ready to move on 
by the time we're in the middle of Q3, uh, the beginning of Q3. That is how fast things are. And so you cannot um, afford to move slowly on these candidates. About a quarter said they expect to hear back from you after an initial application within 48 hours. Within 48 hours. Again, you need to be set up to move fast. How many of you are tracking this? How many of you are paying attention to it? We have so many customers I know out there who have actually seen some true bottom line impact just by putting a um, key, uh, key performance indicator about how fast they get back to today, today's applicants. They know that in order for them to get their fair share of applicants in their market, they need to be the first to respond and then they need to compete on other different things. And finally, we also took a look at the ghosting phenomenon. I wish I could see you all. This is where webinars aren't as fun as in person, but how many of you experienced the thing of uh, what we call the ghosting phenomenon? Um, people who have not shown up to an interview, to onboarding, et cetera. It's, it's a big thing in this job market. Um, in another study that we conducted of employers, 84% of employers said they've been ghosted by a candidate in the last six months, 84%. So we wanna hear from candidates, of, we wanted to understand why they're ghosting, what's happening. That is a big waste of people's times. I know from our recruiting team, if that ever happens to them, that's a big waste of their time and it's a more a demoralizing thing too. So the most common reason, the process was taking too long. If time is my currency, if you're wasting my time, I'm going to move on from you because I have other options. So if you're taking even a few days to respond to applicants or your process is drawn out, you're likely missing out on the best of the best as these folks are moving on to competitors quickly. And given the state of today's labor market, top candidates do not have to wait around for you. They have plenty of other opportunities at their fingertips and you need to put them first and think about how you're showing up to them and how you're responding to them and how quickly you are. If 43% um, said that they're ghosting a potential employer just because it's moving too fast, where can you find time to cut down on um, that for them? Is it in the application? Is it using mobile more effectively? Is it um, making sure there's strong KPIs and how fast you get back to them? There are little tweaks that you can make um, and the systems that you can use to make that work. And so finally, we want to talk a little bit about, hey, if they're using mobile, looking at pay differently, um, looking at speed differently, really um, are thinking about moving on from you if you don't move fast enough, where are they trusting and what is going to give you the best edge? And that fifth takeaway is that job seekers trust their friends. Um, word of mouth has been around um, Facebook or the metaverse, et cetera. Um, social media has made this a bigger source than ever before. We're all looking at reviews, et cetera. And that is no more applicable today than ever um, for job seekers. And people want to work with good people. I think we've all known that. Those of us who've been at workplaces for a really long time. So let's dig in a little bit to understand what that means. 92% of the respondents to this study agree or strongly agree that they're more likely to accept a job offer if a trusted friend acquaintance vouch for this company. 92%. That is, if I had that number as a guarantee as a marketer to make sure that someone um, who raised their hand was going to um, you know, become a partner of ours or something to that effect, that is, that is as good as it gets. Um, and so if you're a recruiter, 92% want to hear from people. So why aren't we tapping into word of mouth and to trusted resources and referrals? When asked where they go first when looking for a new job, nearly half say they go to general job boards. But when asked where they got their current job, the answers are more widely across the board, indicating that the job boards are a common first choice among applicants, but don't always lead to their job. Interestingly, 20% said they found their most recent job through a friend despite only 3% starting there. So one in five said, hey, I chose to work where I'm going to work because of a friend, whereas only 3% actually started their job search there. I am a referral to hireology, and thank God I listened to, um, uh, responded to a text five years ago. Um, and that's how a lot of people have found us here in Terry will to talk about how we have turned our referral um, program into a really good opportunity. And it speaks, you know, this speaks to the importance of this. Not only do they trust their friends to vouch for companies, um, they're more likely to, you know, get an offer. If they receive an offer, one in five of our respondents, they would found their most recent job through a referral. Paying attention to that number and tracking that is super important, both from a financial standpoint, but also where you can put your time and place your best bets to really fuel your recruiting engine. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about the applicant study, what people are looking for, what's going to fuel the applicant um, journey. And now I'll turn it over to my friend and colleague, Anil Harjani, to talk about 
what we have in store to meet this applicant need um, and talk a little about that. And with that, Anil, I'll turn it to you. Kristen, great job. First and foremost, uh, really enjoy being on this triple triple team webinar with you. Um, and I gotta mention, I gotta mention, I am not ready for the day I have to conduct interviews in a meta metaverse. So hopefully uh, that's gonna take some time, at least that portion of the metaverse. But so Kristen told you a bunch of things about what's happening in the market. You know what I think is really great when you think about solutions in hierology, you know, we certainly look, we have a bunch of customers we listen and talk to about, you know, how to solve their needs on the recruiter side or business owner side. But all this research that we've um, that we've conducted on the applicant side, almost think of that as a great asset that we can leverage to really help build a right solution that takes into account uh, really the candidate's perspective on what they really need or desire from a process perspective. And we build all of that value into the solution. And so, <clears throat> you know, without further ado, I'd love to share with you a little bit more about, you know, the hierology solution, what we've outlined, and, you know, we're already at midway through the year. We've delivered a lot of great stuff. Uh, we've talked about a lot of the challenges. Kristen told you all the problems. I'm here to tell you about, you know, how we can talk some about some solutions uh, to help you uh, build your best team. So without further ado, let's get into the next slide here. Um, so hierology introduction. We are the only player in the space that succeeded both the pre-hire and post-hire. So some of you uh, may not be, uh, may know us a lot around hiring and recruiting, but we also have a great payroll platform, talk about it in a second. Uh, but the three main things that we do to help our customers. First, we help them attract the right people, build a recruiting pipeline. They need to be successful. You got to think about it as a sales and marketing function. And we help you build that funnel. And we don't only help you build that funnel just for you know, active applicants. We think of this as a very broad opportunity to build a funnel, leveraging a current employee base, internal mobility, former applicants, uh, Applicants that maybe are not looking right now, maybe they're looking later and building pipelines. So we help you do all those things in a broad spectrum to attract the right candidates when you need them the most. And two, we have a platform to ensure uh, you as a hiring manager are running the right process to make sure you're capturing the hires you need to make and also do that in a very scalable, predictable, and efficient way. Uh, this is, we have so many examples of automation within our hire platform to make you be super efficient. Uh, and we're going to continue to release those throughout the year and the years to come. And third, as I mentioned, we provide a platform that helps you manage the hires that you've made and, and employees post-hire. Th these things include payroll, benefits, learning, and engagement, ton of great tooling to help you run your entire full employee lifecycle. But today, I want to dig in a bit more into exactly how we attract, hire, and manage those particular features we'll talk about and help you address the particular trends we're seeing now midway through 2022. So we hyper-focus on the trends here. So let's get into the first slide here around employer branding. You know, given that we know folks want flexibility, career growth, culture, and are willing to take pay cuts for these perks, you need to know, you not only need to offer these types of policies, but you also need to make it widely known. So it shouldn't be the first time during the interview that someone comes to you know, understand these value propositions for your job. Your application has many features built in that allows you to execute a consistent and seamless employer branding opportunity. So a couple of things. First, job template management. We have an upcoming release to better manage your job, job templates, job, excuse me, job templates across locations to ensure consistency and compliance with all job descriptions. So we want to make sure that you're consistent from a branding perspective. You're not doing it for the first time each time you're setting up a job. Uh, so we create templates. The second one is career sites. This is your best uh, source of quality applicants. And so you can leverage you know, content rich, mobile optimized career sites to showcase your company's story and benefits to attract quality applicants. Again, highly endorsed career sites. And then we've got another great feature that we launched this year around something called a job share and promote modal. What really, uh, what really that means is when we open a job in hierology, we make it super easy for um, the employer to share those open roles across multiple channels in a click of a button. So you can share it on social, you can share it over email, you can copy the link, put it on your Twitter, what, whatever you want to do, you're able to sort of quickly start to amplify um, the, the distribution of the job. And we encourage users to share it on their you know, social networks. I mean, quite often when we put it on our social networks and you think about if you're 50, 100 employee um, you know, location, and each of those 100 employees have 
let's just say an average of a thousand uh, connections on social, you've suddenly you know increased amplification to potentially ten thousand uh, views on on you know for people to look to see whether they want to work with their colleagues uh, or their friends on um, uh, and with you ultimately the brand. So a lot of great stuff going on in employer branding. Uh, next up, we'll talk about uh, easy mobile first processes. So you know, we share some data that most folks are using their phones um, more and more when it comes to job search. On top of that, they want a process to be super easy no matter what device they're using. You know, at Hierology, we make it easy for you to facilitate you know, an easy mobile first uh, process. We've got you know, a couple examples here. So first and foremost, you already heard it from Kristen, SMS, the ability to text applicants and candidates from directly within the Hierology application uh, is key. You know, email is tough to navigate on a phone and often goes, you know, pretty much ignored. I mean, I talked to somebody earlier today who says, I just check my email once a day, max. <laughs> but they're checking texts all the time. Uh, so most texts are, and most texts are read within 90 seconds and they're really easy for folks to respond to. Uh, as there's probably some of you who are religious about using text messaging, others who do it, you know, seldom. And many of you, I would bet, haven't even tried it yet. And so I can tell you without a doubt, the data says that those are texts, when the best applicants or are first in line. And so I encourage you to really take advantage of those feature sets um, if you're with us or encourage to talk, talk to us about it so we can show you how it works. Next is mobile optimized applications. All of our applications are mobile optimized to allow applicants to apply to any open positions on any device. You'd be surprised, <clears throat> you know, uh, if, if some, we've seen some other platforms and so solutions that, that in the market still that when you get onto the mobile device, they're not aligned, it's hard to navigate, you gotta scroll left and right on a mobile screen to access some fields. Uh, that is just not a great candidate experience. They will abandon the application process if they have to go click through multiple screens on a mobile phone to fill an application. It's just not gonna work. And we know that through the data. So we, we off, offer mobile optimized applications. And lastly is application templates. Um, sorry, I can go back. Oh, you're good. Okay, application templates. Each hierology account is equipped with a basic application form that's tailored to ensure all essential applicant information that is captured. These are easy, fully customizable to fit your needs. So you've got a basic application form. We can also really customize it um, to what you think is necessary. And you know, I think there was a there was a question and worth mentioning here around the application form. Yes, fewer fewer fields yields more applicants. Uh, we coach our customers to try to optimize for the least amount of fields possible that makes you feel comfortable after you engage with those candidates to optimize, you know, ease of application and quality. <clears throat> and some 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 jobs you want to pre-screen them out with a lot of fields potentially if it makes sense. Some of them you know what, it's such a tough market. I want everybody in my funnel because I want to be able to maximize my chances. So you have the options here per job. All right, <clears throat> next up is speed. By far, one of the biggest uh, focus areas for us at Hierology. We know that candidates not only get super fast, I mean, two weeks is super fast, but we feel that the process, you know, if they feel the process is taking too long, they will jump ship for other opportunities. <clears throat> I had one example of a candidate who um, mentioned they've got way too many interviews to to um, to do, and they said they can't even attend to my interview because they had they had to push mine a week out because they were doing so many. So we weren't we weren't first in line. We missed out on that opportunity. So you've got to enable our fast hiring process. Um, and that's one of the biggest priorities here. So within our higher suite of tools, we offer all kinds of features that allow you to shave time off your process, including a couple of these. First, mobile app. Uh, we have one of, the, one of the best mobile apps, in my opinion, obviously, uh, to respond to applicants and candidates sooner and speed up the process by working on the go, right? 50% of uh, our candidates are on mobile app. I would argue that you know most many of us, even sometimes sitting at our own desk in front of our desktop, pick up a mobile app and use that as a preferred method of communication uh, or even using the tools that we use to use every day. Push notifications. This has just come out. You know, we can enable uh, notifications to guide them back to the app when something requires their attention. So to call it out, when you're uh, on your mobile phone, let's say you're on a train or in, in transit or, or walking, you get a push notification on the Hierology mobile app saying you've got an applicant or someone has responded to your text or to your email. You'll get that on the front of your screen and it allows you to know immediately 
to engage with that candidate. Maybe he's a candidate you've been waiting to hear from and you want to get in touch with them right away. You don't have to go home, log in, check your email and get to them maybe the next day, right? So we love this new feature we're putting out there. Candidate search, the ability to quickly search and find the right candidate by email, phone number, and other keywords to get those folks through the hiring process faster and ultimately fill your most crucial roles sooner. And so, as I mentioned, you know, sometimes candidates are, are not ready to join your brand right away, and um, but you can build a candidate database and over a couple of months or even a year or two, it can mean the thousands or ten, tens of thousands of candidates that you can mine and engage and make sure that you can you might be able to hire them uh, if, if the time is now right. Interview scheduling, a feature that just launched this year and we've seen super great adoption, we can automatically sync hiring manager calendars with Hireology so we can give applicants and empower them to choose what time works for their schedule, right? So this eliminates much of the manual coordination typically required for this process. We did a ton of research and it, it was clear that the top three things that a hiring manager does is largely just trying to figure out schedules. How long, when can you meet? So tomorrow, today, tomorrow, let me go check. You know, the back and forth takes at least an extra day. So we saw with those that use interview scheduling, you drop your uh, time in just scheduling an interview by half. You cut off an entire day. And that entire day can make the, 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 the most difference if you're trying to hire your, your best candidate. So, and on top of that, we, we learned from running, running uh, interview scheduling over the last couple of months that people want to even go faster. So what they want to do is group interviews. So you see that in italics, group interviews are coming later this summer. In fact, I've got a group interview on Thursday with um, three of my colleagues. And so what we're doing is trying to truncate the time. Don't do, you know, meet the same person over and over. Uh, let's shave some time up even further. You know, most interviews are basically repeats with the candidates. The candidate just telling the interviewer about themselves, their experience, what they can contribute. Why don't we just let the candidate answer that question once? and uh, be able to engage with their team uh, in a much more efficient fashion. So we're super excited about group interviews coming later this summer. All right, referrals. Uh, one of our favorite topics here at Hireology. So from our research, we know that referrals are a great way to source qualified applicants and eventually hires. That's why we've made it a priority over the last year to really you know, beef up on what we offer in terms of referral management. With Hireology, you can manage the entire referral process directly from the application. You can keep track of referral candidates, payout amounts, due dates. You can never miss a payout again. Um, you can even set custom rewards and bonus rules based on the role. So for example, maybe some hard to fill roles that the payout is you know, higher or some roles that you split the payment over the course of six months. Maybe you want to drive some retention for that for the person they referred, um, and also make sure that they're part of the success plan for that new hire that they help bring in to make sure they're successful. Um, and so you can drive some really interesting incentives. Uh, hands down, Hireology has the best referral uh, tooling uh, in the industry, and so I highly encourage you to check out if you're a customer or, pro uh, or someone interested in, in our solutions. Um, it, it it has uh, audibly uh, created some wow moments. Uh, for our customers. And so excited to share more with you there. Yeah, you know, a couple of other things here. You can also manage and analyze your program stats uh, directly over time from the app. So no more, you have to create reports in Excel or Sheets or on a whiteboard. You know, how many referrals did you have? Um, how many were hired? Which department internally made the most referrals? We've got a lot of um, jockeying going on between different locations and uh, multiple networks. And you know, how many people are actually engaging and getting their friends on board? Uh, all of this is tracked in the app, so you can set goals and adjust your efforts over time. It's a really fantastic tool. That's not it for the referrals. we got some more to share here, so let's go to the next slide. You know, what's also great about our referral program is that you can really manage the entire process, so you can start to track referral candidates and bonus payouts, as I mentioned. You, you have to actually get, you know, you have to get referral candidates in the door. So with, with our referrals tool, you can also send SMS and email campaigns directly to employees, reminding them of open roles, right? So one of the biggest challenges for um, a referral programs is just basic communication. You send out one email, say, hey, we got a referral program. And uh, you see a big spike maybe the first week and then it just starts to taper off. Well, what we can do is set up, you know, automated campaigns so your employees get to know it weekly, monthly, 
what are the roles? What are the bonus amounts? Uh, give them the links so it's easy for them to share on social and um, share with their friends and, and, and you know, former colleagues. Uh, and then, you know, on social media, you can also provide them custom tracking links, which you that employee knows that this link is dedicated to them. And they know they have confidence that, you know, you as an employer are tracking all the referrals that are coming from them. And they can also, you know, essentially um, log in or get access to how their referral program is doing. You know, where are they, where potentially where may they be in the process or, um, you know, what was their, what were their payouts essentially? Uh, and so there's a lot of ways for the employees to get more engaged with the program. So all of this to say that the more you get the word out about the program, as I mentioned, the more results you're going to get. And at Hierology, we, we at, at the moment, uh, I'm not going to steal Terry's thunder. So let's see whether she, she talks about how we fully endorse and um, share the referral program. But, you know, we see a lot of success with it. So this is just a taste of what is possible with a solution at Hierology. And excited to share more with you. All right. So with that, you've heard all about the stuff that we've created and tooling. I love to introduce you to my good friend and colleague, Terry Adams. Terry, take it away. Let's see how we practice what we preach. All right. Thanks, Anil. And thanks, Kristen. Um, it is great to work with such amazing colleagues at Hierology. Um, and so I know Kristen talked a little bit about, um, she gave you some statistics about what's going on in the market. Um, Anil talked about product. And a little bit I'm going to tell you to you about today is practicing what we preach, what we do here at Hierology. And I'm going to walk you through our hiring process to show you what it kind of looks like. So first of all, we have a diversified sourcing approach to our hiring practices. That means we use inbound, outbound, and referrals. So for inbound, those are applicants that derive, that apply directly to our website. They see a role, they see an opportunity on our website, and they, they apply directly. Then we have outbound. Our talent acquisition team is out there looking on LinkedIn Recruiter. Um, they're checking other databases, sometimes tech databases, and we like to start career fairs. Obviously, with the pandemic, we haven't had a lot of those, but they're starting to kick, kick up again. So again, we have an, a source of applicants from outbound. Lastly, referrals. And again, like Anil said, referrals are our bread and butter here at Hierology. Word of mouth, and we use Employus, right? So Employus is a wonderful tool to get your uh, employees talking about um, how to apply for a job, um, friends that they have, colleagues that they've worked with in the past, but having this diversified sourcing approach allows us to maximize our applicant flow. So then when you think about a huge applicant flow, think inbound, outbound, and referrals. With that being said, let's take a look at referrals. So in 2022, and we're only in the first half of 2022, Hierology has driven 100 referrals, which is amazing. Of those 100 referrals, 14 were hired. And of those 14, six of them came from someone who was referred and hired at the first half of 2022. So when you think about that, we know that um, referrals are literally one of the best tools that we can use for hiring. And we promote this with our um, weekly company meetings. We have a company meeting every week. And during that meeting, there will be a role of the week where someone from our talent acquisition team will step up and say, these are the role. They'll have the QR code right on the screen for employees, where employees can literally take their phones, look at the QR screen, and then send that information to friends and colleagues that um, they know. It just shows that you're constantly communicating, you're constantly talking to your employees about referrals and letting them know when they get the word out there, we can hire and onboard amazing talent. So definitely referrals are the key. In addition to that, and they all talked about speed, speed and ease is what it's all about. When you are seeking candidates, first thing, condensed job descriptions. Kristen talked about the five fields. Don't make it difficult. You want people to be on their phones or on a tablet. They see a job, they read it, they see that they have the skills that they need for the job, and they go to the next step. Text, text, and then when you're not sure, text more. Candidates are coming in, you see something pop up on your phone, you're like, wow, this person is great for the skill set we need. Don't wait. What are you waiting for? Text them immediately. Send a short and sweet message saying, 
hey, I got your resume. It looks really fantastic. I'd like to set up some times to interview with you. Talk, let's talk about availability. Application process. I have seen applications that are three pages long. No one is gonna look and no one's gonna fill out an application that's three pages long. Speed and ease. Make it easy for the candidate to get in there, fill out a quick application, upload their resume and get you their information. Reaching out to applicants ASAP. We talk about ghosting, right? Um, in this market, for some reason, candidates tend to ghost employers who do not get back to them quickly. Um, speed is the key. They say speed wins. So the faster you can reach out to an applicant, the more success you're going to have with bringing that candidate in, getting them scheduled for an interview, and then eventually hiring them. Um, we talked about a short and sweet outreach, outreaching message and also virtual interviews, right? So no one has time to get in their car and drive to a location where they're going to sit down and interview. Again, speed, right? If you can do a quick virtual interview, you do the phone call, you set up a virtual interview, you can have multiple people doing that group interview, that becomes key to making sure that you're getting the best candidates. Um, so you got to move fast, speed and ease. Um, other best practices. Okay, finding the perfect resume. There is no such thing as the perfect resume. There are some, some that come really, really close, but there's nothing perfect. So when you get a resume and you may be on the fence, schedule the interview. Maybe you'll find out this person has some amazing hidden skill that you didn't know that you could use, or maybe they have something transferable. Maybe they worked in the military. Uh, maybe they worked in retail. You know, two of the best or two of the top training programs for customer service are Starbucks and Nordstrom's, right? So if you have someone that worked at Starbucks or Nordstrom's, you know they're going to have amazing customer, uh, customer service skills. They're going to be really good with customer focus. Um, mind the gap. Um, we're coming out of a pandemic. Um, there are people that are going to have gaps in their resumes. There are people who may have stayed home to take care of children or an aging parent. There are people who go back to take courses, right? And get more certifications so that they can um, have a greater skill set. Mind the gap. Um, it's okay that there are gaps as long as they can be explained. Another thing, don't be the FBI. Um, I saw a, 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 a note in the chat about background checks, right? Um, background checks go back for seven years. So, you know, if someone's done something in 2005, it's not going to show up on a background check. And basically, who cares? At this point in time, you want to move forward within the last seven years. Another thing is background checks do tend to hold up depending on the jurisdictions, they can hold up from time to time um, you getting that information so you can make an informed decision. One thing you can always consider um, if you really like the candidate is that the um, offer that you make them could be contingent based upon the background check that you receive. And lastly, we talk about that uh, perfect resume. When you find that perfect person, you're out there, you're quick to get them. And in this market, like Kristen says, there are two open jobs for every one applicant. So people are looking around. You've got to keep your pipeline flowing. Think about the inbound, outbound, and referrals. You may have found that perfect candidate, and guess what? They may have three other offers, and if you've stopped working your pipeline, if you've stopped recruiting, and that person says no, you have to start all over again. So it's really important to keep your pipeline open. Uh, the candidate experience. So, you know, People love to go right into the interview process and talk about the skills and the resumes. Take a breath talk to the candidate on a personal level, right? People like to talk about themselves. People like people that are interested in them. So find out maybe there's something in their resume that you've seen, or maybe there's something that's on their interest. Take a moment to, to meet them at a personal level. In addition to that, show interest in their experience. If they have jobs in other industries or um, they've done something in a job that they're very excited about, make sure that you, you show that you're interested in that experience and how that experience can transfer into the job that you are hiring them for. Uh, transparency is really, really important. Um, for an example, if you are hiring an entry level salesperson and you are asking them to call 120 times a day, day after day after day, 
and the person doesn't like to do that, you need to be upfront from the beginning and set the expectations for what the role is, right? You wanna make sure that both parties are happy, you're both getting what you need so you can maximize the job and your business. Um, we have had this situation before, you know, if you don't want to dial 120 times a day, we get it. Maybe there's another opportunity for you, or maybe we'll just move on. Uh, the most important thing, though, is when you are hiring candidates, that you set the expectation of what the job is and that you're completely transparent with them um, and their experiences. So what's in it for the candidate? Again, I alluded to the example about the BDR position. We had several BDR positions that we were having a really difficult time filling. And so we couldn't understand why it was taking so long. The BDR role should be filled within anywhere between 15 to 30 days at higher allergy. So we realized we were losing applicants for various, for various reasons. The biggest one, compensation. And as you saw on the slide that Kristen presented, salary is the number one reason. So compensation, benefits, location. So we looked at the role, we looked at some various trends and we decided, okay, we're gonna pivot. We're gonna make some changes, we're gonna make some adjustments. And so we decided to raise the uh, salary level of a BDR, which is a business development representative. Thank you for asking. Um, so we raised the salary, it's an entry level uh, role, sales role. So we raised the salary for that level um, we brought in um, a specific trainer to just work with that team and get them up to speed and ramp them up so that they would have confidence going forward. And then lastly, it's a flexible position, right? Not all of them are, but we're in a hybrid a hybrid world. And so we wanted to make sure that we could provide them with that flexibility for the role. Um, in addition to that, we have now set it up where it's tiered. So they know what the the promotion cycle is going forward. So they can start at that role, they move to the next level, the next level and next level. So we've provided them with growth and opportunity. We've provided them with learning and again, an increased compensation. So we solved the problem. And again, BDRs get hired usually right now within 15 days. So something for you to continue um, to remember and understand as you look for candidates. So with that said, um, I'd like to take a few minutes to open the floor for some questions. Great, thanks, Tara. I'm gonna probably look at what we got in the chat um, because there's lots of great things coming from this research. Um, and Anil, I might kick some to you because lots of questions on background checks um, and the amount of time it takes. I think Terry gave some great feedback of um, giving offers contingent on background checks coming back and speeding up the process that way. Um, but I'll read a couple of them here for you, Anil. Um, uh, background checks take too long sometimes. This has been one of my main issues. And then um, is there a way for us to speed up criminal record checks to be sped up in today's kind of job applicant world and cycle? You know, when you're dealing with court systems and manual uh, people running to courts and trying to pick stuff up, uh, that is out of all of our controls. So, um, so unable to sort of, Unless you get faster runners, perhaps. Uh, but the, you know, the, the the thing where we're trying to do at Hierology, at the very least, in, in our system, is um, uh, at least provide more visibility into the status. Uh, we do get a lot of uh, questions about like um, what's the, what's the status and giving calls into our customer support team, and you know, we got we the answer is usually uh, standard in terms of where things are at. But we want to be able to provide that at least visibility into tooling. Um, and so it does take long. Uh, I, I would uh, I would suggest uh, you know maybe do it earlier, the sooner than later in any process. And one of the things actually we're looking at, and no no promises on when this will come, is that uh, after an interview is conducted and perhaps based on certain scoring of that interview, we can automatically kick off a background check. You know, and so we're looking for ways to at least around the periphery of this particular topic provide more information and also uh, speed things along through some automation. So that's where we're at today. Great. Um, I, we had a question about defining a field in the application. And I think, you know, the research we did on basically kind of what defines it and that number of fields in Yale. And I think it's just any information that you're capturing in an application is considered a field. Mm -hmm. um, so think 
um, you know, name, et cetera, and that information. And I think Anil kind of teed this up in um, the content previously of, you know, tailor how much information you want to collect up front based on the role, based on the skill set you're looking for, based on the applicant flow um, that you are looking to do to fill that role and kind of how challenging it is. And based on that, you can kind of judge, but our recommendation is um, less is more if you can get away with it, um, because it can improve the um, size of the funnel that you're able to drive to that flow. Anything to add there to Anil about fields? for applicants, applications? You know, there's there's no uh, magic number. Uh, yeah. And uh, the answer is always going to be, yes, the, the quality of applicants will be affected. Um, but would, you know, you got to ask what your trade-off is. Uh, would you rather have um, what, the one person who decided to take two hours to uh, a complete application or maybe 20 people who made it super easy and you have the op you have the chance to weed them out in, through pre-screen surveys or a quick text message um, you know, I would take the latter. I mean, those are two extreme examples, but then there's some happy medium. And so we see if customers do a lot of experimentation on this uh, based on role, based on time of the market, you know, just, just seasonality and also what's going on in the market. And so actively managing it is what I suggest. Um, and, and so you can monitor it that way. Yeah, I think the best way, um, the best quote I have to reinforce what Anil said is what gets, um, Manage gets measured. And so paying attention to certain things. And if you're paying attention to it and looking at it, um, you can improve it and make it better and make it work for you. Um, you know, it's not a set and forget system in recruiting and building your best team. It's an ongoing effort, as a lot of you know. Um, speaking of ongoing effort, I'm going to pivot us a little bit to questions on communication and mobile, which is um, near and dear, I know, to all of our hearts um, at Hierology. So um, the first question is mobile application function part of the basic purchase package? And the answer is yes. Um, you know, Hierology is mobile first and we optimize around that knowing that that is where um, the job market is going. I don't know if there's anything else to add, Anil, from your standpoint, but the answer is, this: you know, basically yes. You know, you get access to mobile app and mobile features and the ability to be mobile first. The answer um, is yes, <laughs> but the answer is yes is what I will add too. Yeah, uh, double down. It, it's a must. It is a it is fundamentally a better uh, overall process experience for all parties involved, and um, and it's just it, it's a little bit of change management, but but you can you can use mobile and desktop, and they're all synchronized. So like, you know, what I mean, uh, use all the tools at your disposal. Yeah, speaking of tools at your disposal, the um, next question here is about. Um, tracking and communicating with candidates in the Hierology app as opposed to just applicants um, is the question, is that a possible? We have to track and communicate with candidates. I mean, the answer is yes. Uh, so uh, absolutely. So what, uh, and I think we touched upon this a little bit is that, you know, we can, you can obviously communicate with applicants. I mean, we don't, so we look at it a little differently, but any candidate has ever applied uh, that resides in the Hierology app, you can send them an email or text message if they've obviously, uh, you know, not opted out of text messaging. And so all communication um, is in the uh, in the app. You know, in fact, if I saw a staggering stat, um, Chris, we got to talk more about this, but about last quarter, I think over 1.5 million communications were sent via the Hierology app across a customer base is it is staggering the amount of communication goes on and again we encourage it for you to do it within the app so other people can see you know communication as well as going on you can stay synchronized um and also from a compliance standpoint it's good to have that tracking yeah and then to add that um because I know of you know with COVID um is a great example and thinking about your candidate pool as a database that you want to continue to mine down the road is tracking that communication and making sure you're doing it within the app whether desktop um, or the mobile app itself, um, you can look back on it. You know, I know of certain candidates that have reapplied to Hireology um, that we didn't hire previously that now work here. And it's because we were able to go back and see kind of what their application process was before, how we communicated with them, et cetera. Um, so thinking about it as more as both delivering a great candidate experience, but also being able to kind of keep them warm, um, keep them as a lead for yourselves as you continue to have um, needs to build your best team from that standpoint. Um, there's a great question here of how long should we spend on a phone interview? And I think the time is a really important question, but I will, it's similar to what Anil talks about with the application and Anil and Terry, feel free to jump in here as well. Um, I think the most important thing with interviews is making sure you're consistent in the questions that you're asking and having, you know, interview guides that you're scoring properly. 
from that standpoint. And so whether that takes 30 minutes to finish it, 45 minutes or an hour, use the time that you need to really understand and answer the questions that you think are gonna get you the best candidate and whittle it down to the best hire. Um, but making sure you're consistent across each person you talk to and across each manager that's conducting interviews, I think is actually uh, table stakes first. And then you can start to see, hey, how long does this really take us to answer these questions? Is it 30 minutes? Is it 15? If it's two hours, it's probably too long. Um, but really kind of looking at that, I think asking the question means that you're already ahead of the game, that you're already starting to think about, hey, how long is this hiring process and where can I whittle down any time? Terry and Anil, anything from your standpoint too? We also all hire people all the time as well. So we are constantly having to do this and manage our time accordingly as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the key thing is consistency, right? So you want to stay consistent across the board. You want to make sure that you're asking all the candidates the exact same questions um, and with the exact same people, right? So you don't want, you know, I don't want um, Kristen to come in and ask like one question to, uh, or five questions to a candidate and then Neil to come in and ask the same five questions. Like you want to have a consistent experience and you want the candidate to have a really good experience. Um, again, speed, time, don't ask questions that you really don't need answers to. Um, stick to very specific questions for what you need for the role. I, I'll leave you with uh, an example of a customer I asked this exact question. I said, because um, what they said was they, they do, you know, some <laughs> insane number of interviews a week. So how long do you spend an interview? They said seven minutes tops. And so again, I, 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 that's probably a very transactional conversation, a very pre-screen conversation, which they do then they hand off to the manager to have the more relationship-driven conversation. But I can tell you that people go to the extremes in this market to make sure they move fast to either, you, know, you got to think about, are you qualifying in? Are you qualifying out? Are you selling or buying? Uh, just like any conversation you have, um, that role, seven minutes was their uh, barometer of how fast they should go. Um, with that, we have two minutes left. I heard your calendar ding, which is a good reminder. And I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Speaking of managing time and being effective, um, we have two more questions here. Um, I'll kick us to app and then I'll close us out with another background checks one. Is there a difference between iOS and Android app today? And you'll, um, asking about applicants and candidates in the mobile app today. There is, there is a difference. And certainly uh, iOS app has a lot more feature sets. Uh, the Android app has some feature sets, uh, although we also have a, a mobile web experience. So which you can essentially put a, you know, you can almost, it's almost app-like you can create the, the app icon on your phone and easily access the mobile web experience, which has all the feature sets and it's all mobile optimized. So uh, I guess, you know, uh, Raphael, whatever experience you're looking for, uh, you know, we have mobile options for you and, and many of them are, you know, almost um, uh, you know, the same experience, no matter what form factor uh, you're using. And so I encourage you to reach out to us to talk more about it, but um, there's a difference, but there's options too. And our last question, I always like to end with a legal question. Um, is it legal to look at more than seven years in a uh, background check? And that I that I think is a question for our friends at Accurate, and you'll or Terry, may you may know as our VP of people. Oh, yeah. That would be a Terry. I mean, um, background checks only go back for seven years, so you know, not really sure what you're looking for. Understanding that you are having people go into people's homes, but seven years is pretty much the standard. Um, you don't need to go back more than that. Think about like the IRS and all those other things. It's seven years is the standard. Um, if someone's going to do something, or if there's some issue with someone's background check. Um, it's usually within that seven years. Now, depending on the age of the person, it could be really different. Um, I had a candidate who um, applied. He was in his 20s. Um, his background check came back, ironically, and there was like a misdemeanor on there for, you know, breaking and breaking an entrance. And I asked him about it. Well, you know, he was in college and he was not very smart and went to his girlfriend's house and, you know, was like knocking on the door kind of thing. So you just have to be, you know, if you're not sure, just ask people. Um, I think that's always best to ask because you don't want to make assumptions and then assume wrong. I like the, the max. This is not, this is not a, a legal and official answer. There are solutions out there that go beyond seven years. So it's not, don't take it as like, is it legal or is it not legal? I've seen it. It is just not something that we see our customers really often looking at. So seven years is standard to Terry's point. Uh, you just got to think about it. And, and largely because the data gets, um, the data integrity uh, starts degrading quite a bit after seven years because no one's really required necessarily to keep it. So, um, you know, think about what, what, what matters uh, the most in these situations when you're looking for solutions. Great.
Um, that's a great one. And we're right at time. So I um, appreciate um, my friends, uh, Anil and Terry joining me for today and appreciate all of you. Um, I know it is um, a busy time with summer. We're being full in summer. It's a Wednesday at the end of the quarter, at the end of the month. Um, so we appreciate you spending your time here with us. If you have any other questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to any of us um, or anyone at Hierology. Um, we're here to help you build your best team. And this information will be sent to you afterwards, including the deck and the recording. Um, but thank you so much and have a great um, rest of your day and week and month. Happy fourth, all. Happy fourth. See you, everybody.